In this episode, I talk with Kanzi Kamonstable about how to create multiple streams of income with online courses and corporate consulting. Welcome to the Online Course Coach Podcast, brought to you by TrueFocusMedia.com. Whether you're a beginner or expert, this is the podcast for the latest in online course creation tips, news, interviews, and ideas. And here's your coach, Jeff Long. Welcome back to another episode of the Online Course Coach Podcast. Now, I know you are all involved in different industries with different types of courses and audiences, but I do know a lot of you are in the corporate world. Either you're currently in the corporate world or you've worked in the corporate world or you have courses or consulting that deals in the corporate space. Now, if your course, your audience, your focus is not anywhere near the corporate world, I definitely want you to still listen to this because Kamanzi has a lot of good tips uh, for anybody listening, both with your mindset, with your approach, and different marketing strategies that we talk about at the end. So you definitely want to listen to this episode. I've done a variety of corporate courses, and there's so many opportunities. And so Kamanzi and I go in depth about how to get over the fear of working with large companies, and he even gives a tip on how to get in the door. But really, an even better strategy is the one-two combo that Kamanzi does with consulting and having online courses. And that's what Kamanzi talks about today. In fact, he talks about different revenue streams, different audiences, different opportunities, and it is really exciting. In fact, I've been in one of uh, Kamanzi's online courses for a while now, and I love it. It's one of the many reasons why I wanted to get him on the podcast, not just to talk about the course that I'm in, uh, but also his overall business, where he's been, but where he's going, and even some of the, he shares in in detail, some of the uh, rates that he's charging for his consulting and courses. So I think it'll be an eye opener on what he can, what he does charge and what you can charge. I think that's the important thing is so many times I see people selling themselves short or maybe not even seeing the opportunities that there are for courses. You know, they think, hey, it's just in one industry or area or maybe, you know, companies are so big, they've got it covered, right? Well, Kamanzi and I talk about that and how to uh, approach companies and, and how to have the right mindset to get in there. Now, I've seen a lot of results from his program that I took, the Get Booked program that we'll talk about, and I'm actually in the process of ramping up his system. So, if you're looking to grow your influence, write for large publications, or do consulting for corporations, and sell courses at high, high prices, then I can't recommend his Get Booked program enough. Uh, I'm an affiliate, but I can vouch for the quality of the program. So if you're looking to scale your business up, you definitely want to check out onlinecoursecoach.com forward slash get booked, and it'll take you to a page with uh, his course information as well as some of the other courses he has. And we talk about some of the other courses, not to not to sell them, but to show you uh, what he has done and, and what he teaches. But I know you're going to learn a lot, get a lot of uh, good insights And maybe even uh, uh, it will open your eyes to the opportunities of working with companies. Well, Kamanzi, thanks so much for being on the Online Course Coach podcast today. Hey, Jeff. Thanks so much for having me. I love online courses and online business, so I'm excited to talk about this stuff. So I want to jump into your life right now. So talk to me about your corporate consulting and your courses and how you and, and your different types of corporate clients that you work with. Well, I would say my life right now is busy. I would say that's the best way to characterize it. I have a business that has three different divisions. The first division is the traditional online division where I do sell courses to entrepreneurs, membership websites, coaching, all of that sort of stuff. The second division is an agency division where I have seven people that work for me and we take on projects from uh, corporations where we set up training programs and podcasts and personal development programs and we take out a lot of agency work. And then the third division is a corporate consulting division where I actually go into corporations, Fortune 500 companies and large multinational corporations. And I do training on digital marketing 
marketing, on branding, on podcasting, on the entrepreneurial mindset. And I travel to about 25 countries a year to do that. So it's it's a three-division business that definitely keeps me busy, um, but I love what I do. And I love that. I love that that's where you, you know you came to was, hey, instead of creating one thing and selling it once, how could I you know create something and sell it multiple times, different industries, different clients? Uh, I know you've you know put on different uh, Facebook posts and stuff, certain clients that that want to almost um demand that you create a piece of content and they retain the rights. Tell me about that. Do you like that? Do you hate that? Where are you in that? Yeah, I would say that's probably pretty typical when you're dealing with a, especially a larger corporation, they just want to own everything. Sure. So you go in there and they want to own the content, they want to own the presentation. And I've had to walk away from several what people would consider big deals Mm -hmm. because I wasn't willing to, because that content over my lifetime is going to be worth far more than what they were offering. So yes, when when you're dealing with the big corporations, they definitely want to own it. And if you're signing corporate contracts or negotiating corporate contracts, contracts. That's definitely something you should be watching out for. And the contract is who owns what. Hmm, that's good. That's good. Now, <clears throat> talk to me about um, some of the the challenges or maybe opportunities. You know, when, when some people hear that you're working with big companies, uh, international companies and, and all of that, that may seem scary or intimidating. Like, how did you get over that hurdle that it may seem scary, hard, difficult, challenging. Like, how did you break through where so many people haven't even made the jump? Yeah, it's definitely a mindset shift when it comes to that because I I remember starting out and I didn't, like, up until 2011, I didn't even touch a computer. Mm -hmm. Then in 2011, I discovered uh, Pat Flynn's podcast and started listening to some podcasts and got excited about this whole idea of lifestyle business. I jumped into that world and the sales weren't going as, as I wanted to. And it took about a full year to make some real money. But once I dived in, I dived in. And it was a process of doing all of these different things that made me extremely uncomfortable. So starting an online business, putting content out there and having people see it that were strangers, putting books out there and products that people bought that were strangers and wondering, are they going to get the value from this? <laughs> Do I have enough value? And then this idea of consulting came around and I had done some local consulting where I lived in Milwaukee, I had gone to some local companies and said, hey, let me handle some of your social media stuff. You're, you're not doing it right. Let me do this because this was pretty popular in 2012. Mm-hmm. And I took that on. But to make the leap to the bigger corporations. And, you know, my mindset was, and I think a lot of people have this mindset, well, they have somebody on staff that would do it. Or they, they already have a team or whoever, or they can hire some large agency to do it. And the reality is that once I actually got into the space, I got that first opportunity to go to New York and to uh, do a a training at a large corporation. And once I got in there and I started talking and I started, I said, I remember I said this, Jeff, I said, um, I was talking about lead magnets and I, and I said the word lead magnet and I got about 15 hands that, and people were like, what's a lead magnet. Right. And I thought, Oh boy, that's when I really realized how far behind, especially these larger corporations yeah. are. So the mindset shift for me was this. If I didn't feel like I was the quote unquote expert, I had to go and I had to brush myself up on my craft and become more of an expert. So I did the research. If I didn't feel like an expert, I told myself I'm going to put even more into my presentations and trainings than they even expect to show that I'm the expert. So it was a mindset shift of, hey, I may not quite be, you know, this Accenture or some other big agency, but I am knowledgeable. I do have the skills and I'm going to become more knowledgeable and I'm going to give them something that's going to, that's going to rock their world. Yeah, that's so good. That's so good. You know, I've found as well that there's such big opportunities with with companies like you're saying, you know, sometimes it may seem like, oh, they've got it all together, but but they don't or, you know, there's gaps uh, in where they can uh, hire uh, some different things internally. And that's where a consultant comes through. So uh, tell me how, you know, you're doing these consulting um, uh, trips or, or gigs or whatever. When did the the courses come into play? Was that was that immediate or did that come in over time that you well, offered courses to them? It probably came in after my third gig where a company said, hey, is there any option for us to get even more training after mm-hmm. you leave? 
And that's when I thought, oh, I got these courses. So I said, I do have some online courses that you could possibly look at. And they're like, yes, yes, we want those. So back then, it was just me simply letting them purchase the course for the same price that somebody could purchase it for online. And it was a mentor who kind of saw what was going on, the direction I was going in, and said, hey, you're leaving a lot of money on the Mm. table. Um, You should consider phrasing it and structuring it this way. And if it wasn't for that mentor, who knows? I don't, maybe I would have caught on eventually, but that, that was a game changer, but it was, it was probably three gigs in and it was definitely a company approaching me saying, Hey, we want more options for training. Yeah. So talk about those courses a little more, you know, like do you pitch them every single time or do you have that as a line item in your proposal or, you know, when do you talk to them about, you know, that you have these courses as, um, for their training? Yeah, definitely in the proposal phase when you're doing the proposal where you say, here are the options for us to work together and you can structure those options from doing like a one-off training, several trainings, uh, the option to license courses, the option to set up a training program or the option to have like a Mac Daddy option where they have Hmm. like some one-on-one time with you over a specified period of time. But in the proposal phase is definitely a good time where you could include that in there or even after you're done, you do the follow up, I usually do a follow up survey with the company just to make sure everything went good, to make sure we're on the same page in that follow up survey. And I talk to them about have you thought about uh, the options for additional training? Hmm. And when they say yes, that's when we'll send them a new proposal that is specifically about courses and specifically about other options. Yeah. You know, I've been surprised when I do talk to my corporate clients, whether it's HR or even some of the sales management, you know, they want to use e-learning. And I I bring up like, hey, have you considered e-learning? So many companies haven't even considered that as an option, uh, both internally to train their own employees, as well as externally to train their uh, uh, customers, their clients, whatever. Have you found that to be the case, too? They, They just don't know what the technology is capable of? Exactly. Yeah, because they're so focused on what works for them, what has worked for them since their founding, and they're going, they're operating with their their comfort zone, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So this is what worked for us. This is what we're always going to do. And then, yeah, you have somebody like yourself come in, or they start to see this new technology and opportunities around them, and they're just so far behind. Yeah, yeah, it's so good. Now, do you, um, when you're creating these, these courses for your, your corporate clients, do you have a, a system or how do you go about creating them? Are they extremely complex? Are they simple or somewhere in between? Probably somewhere in between. I use a, a software that I had a developer create for me. That's it would be the equivalent of like Quick ClickFunnels. Mm. It op, kind of operates in that fashion, but it's specific to corporations, and it's it's you can white label everything and and customize everything. But it's specific in the fact that it assigns specific licenses and it tracks who's using it and who's not using it, and my assistant can monitor all that with some ease. But as far as the the structure inside there goes, it, it's kind of set up like ClickFunnels. But as far as the course content, yeah, it can't be too complicated for most of these corporations because they're just not there yet. Mm. I would say it's a cross between somebody who is just starting out in internet marketing and somebody who has a couple co- uh, courses live on ClickFunnels and, and selling those courses. It's probably a cross between that level of complexity. But again, you can't give them too much initially. And that's that's good for, for us as um, content creators or educators, because it's not like you're creating these, I don't know, highly complex courses and, and content. You know, it's it's more about the, the quality of the content than the the wow factor, maybe, you know, and so there it's it's a win win. It's maybe easier for you to create, but it's more effective for uh, the employees as they're going through it. They're not confused or it's not complicated. Exactly. So. I don't know if you're comfortable sharing numbers, but like what, what's, what are some potential, you know, ranges for prices that you've charged over the years for the consulting side, for the, the course side? Are you comfortable sharing that? Yeah. For the courses at now, at this stage in, in where I am in my career, <laughs> um, I, I license courses at one, uh, $2,000 
per license, per employee, per year. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the standard rate that I give to all corporations. On average, if I go do a gig and it's not negotiated ahead of time, and we go and they go back and they want follow up training, I could expect anywhere from thirty to about sixty thousand dollars in court in licenses being purchased after, because I've gone in there and I've added the value. If it's negotiated ahead of time, I think I, the last time that I saw on average is about forty forty thousand dollars on average just negotiated ahead of time as far as licensing goes. So um, it has been really good that way. I've I had the opportunity now to work with a lot of companies that have renewed, that renew every year and that mm-hmm. buy more throughout the year. So it's it's kind of a, the situation that once you get in there, you do get some good work for them, you give them some good content, they're going to keep coming back to you because they do have the budgets. As far as corporate consulting, on average, I would say that I'm getting for a three-hour one-off presentation – uh, on average, it's about $45,000 for the three-hour one-off. And somebody's going to be listening to this, and they're going to be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and and the thing to understand is with corporations, one, they have the budget. Yeah. And they have to spend this money that's in their budget set aside for marketing and training. So the money's there. And two, you're, you're talking about value at a different level. So while I might charge them $45,000 for a three-hour training, they're going to take that and make you know, 450,000 mm-hmm. or maybe 4.5 million, who knows, depends on how good they implement, but they're going to take the, whatever you charge them and they're going to get 10 times the value. Whereas if you sold somebody an online course for a thousand bucks, chances are they might not even finish it. Right. Yeah. So, so it's, it's, de- it's going to be a different situation and you're, so your pricing is going to be different and they're going to understand that. You know, I think you brought up a really important uh, point. You said, you know, companies already have this in their budget, right? And so it's it's almost like, hey, to the listener, would you rather get paid that amount or just leave it on the table and have another consultant get it? You know, so it's not like you're convincing companies that they need to write something into their budget or whatever. Well, m- many companies already have, you know, training or or whatever, you know, built into their plans, which is fantastic. Um, yeah. And the, and the thing that I always tell entrepreneurs is this, for those of us that sell courses and especially sell them online, we work hard to convince people to buy our course, no matter what, it could be like two ninety seven or $3,000, <laughs> whatever the price range is, you work hard and people have questions and some people have been ripped off and people are tapped out. And there's a lot of different situations going on with an individual person. So whatever your course is priced, you're going to work hard to get that. That individual in there. Whereas with a corporation, like Jeff said, the money's in the budget. They just want to be convinced that you are the expert. Well, you can show them that you're the expert without as much effort as it, was, it would take to show an individual why they should buy your course. Exactly. I, I've always said, because uh, my clientele is kind of both. You know, there's a lot of companies that I work with as well as a lot of entrepreneurs. With entrepreneurs, it is harder because that money, I mean, they're almost literally taking out their wallet and giving you their own money. Versus a company, you know, many times they're just saying, okay, that's in the budget. Here you go. No big deal. You know, they don't lose any sleep over it. Whereas entrepreneurs, like, you know, we're, we're, we're cheap or we're frugal, whatever you want to call it. So it can be more challenging. So we've talked about, you know, kind of you being at the, the peak of success or at a certain level. Uh, what would you tell yourself, your 2011 self, you know, if, if Con- Kamanzi back then could look at you now? What would you tell him, you know, like, because you have reached this level of success? Would would he believe you and how would you convince him? Yeah. Would he believe me? No, that it wouldn't have reached <laughs> this level. <laughs> Definitely not because back then he was just trying to figure out how to do any of this stuff. Mm. So the thing that I would say that I would tell myself is stop chasing shiny objects um, because I would listen to a different podcast or read a different article or watch a different video and everybody had an opinion about how do you build a lifestyle business? How do you build an online business? And I chased every one of those methods. Mm. You know, I tried to focus on SEO for a while or I would try to um do the uh, the online summit, which was like a really popular thing, or the messenger bots or whatever. Like there was always something new coming out when the reality was 
I just needed to focus on the basics. The basics being establishing a foundation online that is around a topic that people understand and then building an audience for it. And I think that's where a lot of entrepreneurs uh, struggle is building that audience. They don't build the audience. They focus so hard on the widget or the thing that they're building or the foundation. And then when they go to sell it, they have nobody to sell it to. Then you put yourself in a position where you're trying to sell it through other people's audience. So we have seen this where we've seen, we've been in Facebook groups and we see somebody that's trying to sell their course and then like three seconds later their post gets deleted by the admin. Or they're trying to send messages through Messenger like, hey, consider buying this. And they're chasing, their, people put a, a pick me post where it's like, hey, I'm looking for a coach or a course. And everybody and their mother is responding to that post. <laughs> Even that person's not going to pick anybody in that post. But if I could tell my Myself, anything it would be build your audience build your mm-hmm. email list build up your social media presence build it all up so that you do have this opportunity to do whatever you want yeah it's so good that's so good because that's one of the message i i tell this audience and tell my coaching students and all that is yeah i mean it's hard to to have that success whether it's courses or other things um if you don't have that email list or that audience or or whatever because they're going to tell you what they want right you know they're going to let you know what's important uh to them um so you you've you've mentioned a little bit where you came from tell me a little bit more and maybe because i kind of know your background or whatever but but share a little bit about where you did come from, what you were doing before this online space, so we can kind of see that dramatic uh, rise to where you currently are. Yeah, I've uh, I started my entrepreneurship journey at 19. Before that point, I had probably a pretty typical journey like everybody that had worked a number of jobs, had moved up from the Burger King days to working for companies like Pepsi and Frito-Lay and Coke and Sara Lee. And it was at Sara Lee that I had the opportunity to start my first business because I would see the independent, there was some independent bread vendors that delivered a bread called Aura Wheat. I think it'd be called Aura Wheat by you. It's called Bromberry by us. But they didn't work for the company. They weren't employees. They were independent contractors. And I didn't understand what that was. But being an independent contractor meant that they didn't get somebody to cover their route so that they could go on vacation. Mm. And so a light bulb kind of went off. And the guy was telling me, he's like, I haven't been on vacation in 10 years. He's like, if we had somebody good, this guy would work all day long. So my first business ended up becoming a vacation relief service Hmm. for independent bread owners in Wisconsin. (laughs) And there's about 200 of them. So it didn't take long at all for my schedule for the entire year to fill up with guys that said, I would go and I'd run their route for one week at a time. I would use their truck, their equipment, their gas, all of their stuff. All I would do is show up. I would deliver the bread, make it look nice, and then they would cut me a check for 10% of the profits. Hmm. And these guys were doing anywhere from $2,000 to $4,000 a week. So it, it ended up being like some really good uh, paydays on on these routes. So. That's what I did. And it wasn't long before uh, the word started getting around like, hey, we have somebody good. Because the biggest thing is is showing up. Sure. Because these guys could be in Jamaica. And then if I didn't show up, they're going to get a call saying, hey, nobody's here to deliver your bread. Get this delivered or we could take you out. We're going to breach your contract and mm-hmm. take you out. So they needed somebody that was absolutely dependable. And once I did that, they're like, can you get somebody else? <laughs> and so I brought on two people. And then I brought on, at one point I had six people. We were running routes in Wisconsin, Illinois, and Indiana. The business was doing about half a million dollars a year. So I did this for 12 years. Now it sounds great and it's a great business. Anybody that's listening to this could start this today. Although I think you're going to, that's the wrong takeaway from this episode. (laughs) Um, But the point being, um, I didn't understand entrepreneurship. So I ended up in a situation where I was about $180,000 in tax debt from the business and mismanaging the money. Um, working at 2 a.m. every night because I didn't understand entrepreneurship. I didn't understand to just manage a business. I was always on the truck, which really sucked. And then I was uh, mismanaging the money and working that time led to some really bad habits. And so come 2011, I was 180 grand in debt. I was about 180 pounds overweight. Uh, My marriage was falling apart and it was just a bad time in my life. And it just so happened that was the time where I'm like, you know, I needed to Distraction. So I took out my phone and I'm like, people were talking about this podcast stuff. And I'm like, I don't know anything about this, <laughs> but I needed a distraction. So I turned on a podcast and it just happened to be that the first podcast was 
Pat Flynn. I wouldn't say that's an accident at all, mm. um, but it happened to be Pat Flynn, and that's what started this journey. I love it. I love it. Yeah, it's so good. I mean, you can you can definitely see how you were entrepreneurial, uh, but maybe you know you just learned to apply it in a more leveraged way or more you know beneficial way with what you're doing now, which is pretty cool. Um, so you talked about your your corporate side, where you, whether you're doing consulting or courses or whatever. You also have you know, the, the entrepreneurial side with your online audience and you have different courses like the get booked program and, and different things like that. Tell me how you got to the point where you could create courses for entrepreneurs. Yeah, it was, it's a crazy journey Jeff, to get to this <laughs> point because I've had so many iterations of what I do online. My first website was called Tales of Work and it was all about finding or creating a work that you love. Mm -hmm. um, kind of a spinoff of our friend Dan Miller. Oh, yeah. I know Jeff knows yep. who he is. So oh. that got me pumped. And then from there, I got, I started thinking about, I, I had to get to the point where I thought about what am I really passionate about and who am I passionate about? And for me, it was the group of it was a men and it was like blue collar men that were doing jobs that they hated but they want to do something more like a business that gives them freedom and that's kind of where i landed on lifestyle business not an online business where you're just selling courses and membership websites and yada 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 a lifestyle business that also mixes in speaking consulting travel but more so it's a business that supports the life you want to live, not, not your life supporting your business, which I think entrepreneurs tend to do. So when I got, I zeroed in on lifestyle business, it opened up a lot of doors for me with that clarity because I knew who I was speaking to and I knew what I wanted to teach them. Well, I am a writer first and foremost, I've written four books. They've done pretty well. And I knew that uh, writing was something that I wanted to do. I, When I wanted to grow as a writer, I got into a lot of large publications like Entrepreneur and Success and Business Insider, Fox and CBS, stuff like that. And I knew that I could do it. And once I got in, I knew that people would want to know about it. And it's a great way to build your audience for lifestyle business. Well, boom, that led to the, uh, I have a course called Large Publications Masterclass, which is all about getting into publications. And then coincidentally, when I started doing this digital marketing stuff, a lot of local companies in Milwaukee were like, hey, we need this, but we don't understand mm -hmm. this. So I was able just to go in Milwaukee and just cherry pick gigs like I did. <laughs> they, and they're not big gigs. They we're talking about like $2,000 to $5,000 gigs. But I did a bunch of these because I could just drive there, do it, and be done. And so with that experience, that helped me get into the larger stuff. Well, once I started consulting, and especially once I started traveling for consulting, as you imagine, people online were seeing these photos and they're mm -hmm. seeing what's going there. Like, how do you do it? Well, that's how Get Booked was born because I had about a thousand people say, how do you book speaking and consulting gigs and I want to do it? Well, I created a program called Get Booked to do that. And then when I started thinking about the overall picture of this. What ties this all together? How do you do this? That's when I, my, I created my third course, which is the Lifestyle Business Accelerator, which is the course that ties all of this together. How do you build a 21 revenue stream lifestyle business that creates freedom in your life, that gives you financial security, and that makes an impact? And I have had a lot of iterations like where I did smaller one-off trainings, this or that. And I got to the point, uh, Jeff, where I realized I'm only going to focus in on these three. I'm going to make them super valuable. Mm -hmm. And with each of them, I'm going to offer ongoing support and personal coaching with me because I don't just want anybody who takes my course to, to watch the videos and that's it. I want them to have the support and make sure they have their questions answered long after they've gone over the course content. And then I wanted to give them some one-on-one -on -one time with me to make sure that they actually implement what they learned. Because as we know, I don't know what the stats are, but it's a crazy amount of people that buy courses and then don't do anything yeah. with it. Yeah. And I didn't want to fall in that boat. Yeah. When I can vouch as a, a Get Booked member, you know, just how much time you're in um, you know, the, the Facebook group doing answering questions, how many, you know, different sessions you're adding or different v extra value that that wasn't as advertised. You know, it was like icing on the cake that you're just throwing our way. And it's been fantastic. So um, I'm guessing, you know, if, if your involvement and in everything with the Get Book program is similar to your others, it, I can't yeah vouch enough for the value that you create. Um, 
Talk a little bit about the specifically about the Get Booked program and maybe some success stories you've had from some of your students. Yeah, Get Book program. I I consider that like my first love <laughs> because <laughs> it was like my first major course. It is a course that initially started as as four sessions, four modules that covered foundation, covered building, social proof, covered paid speaking, paid consulting, and then all the nitty-gritty details. It has since grown into 10 sessions. Mm -hmm. So um, I added a fifth session that's on getting into print magazines and newspapers, mm -hmm. and then I brought in five other experts. So I brought in a corporate attorney to talk about corporate contracts and doing corporate negotiations. I brought in a PhD to talk about mindset and self-limiting beliefs because like you, we you and I talked about Jeff at the beginning of this, it's a mindset shift to go from doing what you're doing to go after these larger companies. Yeah. And there's a lot of stuff that comes up. So then I brought in an expert to talk about corporate training. What does it actually mean to do the gigs and put together presentations? And I brought in a consultant that has done 2,700 presentations at 500 Fortune 500 companies. So he knows a little bit about what he's doing. <laughs> I brought in a content expert to talk about how do you create expert content for corporate operations um, because I knew that was important. And then I brought in a CPA to talk about bookkeeping and finances and structuring your business because building, you don't just want to speak and consult. You don't just want to sell on courses. This all has to be a part of an overall business and that business needs structure. So it was a program that it's. I felt like it was strong before. Jeff was in the earlier versions mm -hmm. and then he saw six sessions get added <laughs> over a period, and these were and these were at no extra cost to the right. members that were already there. But it's now a it's a ten session course. It comes it has four bonus master classes. It has a cold pitch case study, which is a case study of my students. And at this point, sixty of the graduates have booked over a million dollars worth of corporate consulting gigs. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I think it's it's good when I, I know I do this when I'm considering buying a, into a course. I've bought into plenty. You know, I'm not just a, a guy that has a podcast. Like I I love ongoing education. Um, and so what I look for is a potential upside. You know, and and so with your get booked program, the upside is phenomenal, especially if you're looking to do uh, more corporate consulting and and courses and content and all that good stuff. Um, so it's not like, hey, spend X now and make maybe you know double that. No, this is this is a significant ramp up uh, from what the cost is to what the value is, which is really cool. So I I appreciate you putting all the material together and and help us and helping us out uh, throughout all the 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 questions and interactions. Uh, the last couple of things are, uh, what are some marketing strategies that you, that have worked best for you? Yeah, for me, it's been a mix of a lot of things, but I, I did some basic SEO and, and always will continue to do that, which is good. Um, getting interviewed on podcasts has been good for me. I've done probably like over 250 podcast interviews over the years. So that has been really good. The biggest strategy piece, which this is not going to be a surprise to Jeff, um, <laughs> has been creating content for large publications. So the large name brand publications, places like Forbes and Fast Company and Entrepreneur that are getting literally hundreds of millions. I mean, Forbes gets 101 million unique visitors hmm. a month. Inc. gets 110 million unique visitors a month. You just you can't beat those numbers. So every time I have my content published on these publications, not only do I get lots of email subscribers, I've been able to build a list of over 55,000 people writing for the publications. So it's helped me build a list. I'm able to sell books. It's given me exposure to the people that would hire me as a speaker and consultant because that's who's consuming this content. And it's given me a really good social proof to be able to say that I'm a contributor there. So that's probably been my number one strategy that has helped. And I think that's so good because I find that so many people uh, when they're creating content or they want to market, they're only staying in their own playground, right? They're only creating blog posts on their own website. Many times there's not much traffic there. Or uh, yes, they have a podcast, but you know there's only so much audience that a, a podcast can have. Whereas I love that you're going, you know, where where other people are going, you know. So whether that's popular websites or uh, podcasts or other things. So to the audience, to the listener here, I would encourage you. I would beg of you. 
don't just kind of stay in your own bubble. Get out there. Even if it's not a, a perfect exact fit, you got to get out there. You got to help other people, serve other people. And Kamanzi is a, a fantastic uh, showcase of how he's been able to do that. Um, so, uh, Kamanzi, and wrapping up, is there anything else you would like to uh, share with the listeners? Yeah, I, you know, I would say you hit the nail on the head. You always want a diverse marketing strategy and you always want to build your business in a diverse way. So use the different avenues to build your audience, but do focus on building your audience. And then also think about multiple revenue streams, not just speaking, consulting courses. There's a lot of other ways to monetize a lifestyle business, but add as many of those income streams as you can to your business because we have all seen the situation where somebody's relying too much on coaching or courses and then the sales aren't there or the clients aren't there and you're wondering how you're going to pay your bills. So create some consistent income for yourself by mixing up and having those multiple revenue streams and then just realize what's possible. We live in a pretty amazing time. 3.5 billion people use the internet. Uh, $107 billion will be spent this year on online courses. Corporations will spend $365 billion on training. And I just saw that the uh, e-commerce market is going to hit $4.5 trillion. So we don't lack for opportunities. Mm. We've got to go out there and we've got to get it. That's so good. That's so good. Oh, one final thing. How many countries have you been to, by the way? 77. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. Well, that, that kind of, I always, I brag to people that I've been to all 50 states and I've, I'm trying to think how many countries. I know all, uh, well, five of the seven continents, but uh, do you think you're going to ever uh, hit all seven? I don't know who you could consult with on Antarctica, but do you have a goal of hitting all seven continents? Yeah, I've, I've done six. Um, nice. Antarctica is the only one that's left. <laughs> I don't think I'll book a gig there, but I might just go there just to, to do it. Exactly. I have a college buddy that back in college, we kind of had a wager, you know, who would hit all seven first. And so I think we're both at five. I, we've each you know, kind of hit a couple. So we'll see who gets uh, to Antarctica first, but we're well, cool. Well, come on, Z, I really appreciate you being on the online Course Coach podcast today. Where can people learn more about you? You could head to kconstable.com. That's K-C-O-N-S-T-A-B-L-E.com. And you can get a bunch of free stuff and see some some great content that will definitely help your lifestyle business. Well, I hope that interview was helpful to learn how to think and what to do so you can also work with uh, corporations, big companies, small companies, local companies, international companies. Uh, you can do consulting, you can do courses, done for you services. Uh, there's a variety of different things you can do to help them and help yourself increase your income. And it might not be as hard as you think as far as getting in the door. You know, it definitely takes work. You have to pitch the company. You have to get in in front of them in a certain way. And he he talks about that in his course, but it's it's doable. You know, I always have the attitude, if somebody else can do it, chances are I can learn it. I can hire somebody to do it, or I can, you know, uh, see maybe it's something I don't want to even do as I go down that road. But if somebody can do it, it's doable, right? So I want you to have that same attitude. So don't forget, if you want to get uh, his courses, you can go to online coursecoach.com forward slash get booked to get access or to get on his waiting list. And uh, like I said before, I, I can't recommend his courses highly enough. I'm in uh, one of them and it is phenomenal. It is amazing. Well, that is all for today. I hope this inspires you. I hope it opens your eyes to see the opportunities with uh, corporate consulting, with online courses. So I want to ask you, what are you going to do with this? Maybe it's checking out Kamanzi's program. Maybe it's not, and that's completely fine. Maybe it's uh, putting a package together that you have had an idea for to approach a company for your course, for your services, or for your consulting. Now, I've talked in the past about uh, maybe having some training on how to get uh, corporate, how to get in the door with companies, um, because that is such a valuable opportunity. And you can start in your area. You don't, you don't have to start, you know, on the West Coast or East Coast or wherever you are not. Start where you are today and build your influence. You know, Kamanzi talked about that. Building your audience and your influence first is key. 
So if you're interested in any of this, I'd love to hear where you are in the process. Uh, shoot me an email or go to onlinecoursecoach.com forward slash contact. And you can let me know where you are in the process of uh, getting corporate uh, courses, or maybe you're just thinking about it and have a couple questions. I'd love to help. So again, go to onlinecoursecoach.com forward slash contact and check that out today. All right, we'll keep coming back to the show. And if this has been helpful to you, uh, so many of you have reached out and said, you know, that these uh, podcasts have been helpful. Some of you have, multiple people have said these are almost like mini courses or mini uh, modules in themselves. And I try to make them content heavy so that you can learn a lot. Uh, Part of it, I want you to learn. I want you to know but I also want you to grow and to act. And so that is my ultimate goal. So keep coming back to the show, share it out with somebody that could be, uh, that could learn something from this. Keep creating your content, keep building your audience and making your courses because it is my goal to help you to teach many so you can impact millions. 